look at us. Three Musketeers, <laughs> back together again. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Ifwa Labi, and in today's video, we are going to talk about The Shy Season 4. Well, I just finished watching the Season 4 finale, and I, at this point, I don't know if it has been renewed for a fifth season, but with the way they ended the fourth season, they ended it very, like, you know, they closed up all the loopholes, they closed up all the threads, even though they left a few threads dangling. So that even if it's cancelled, it's kind of like, oh, they closed it up. So it's fine. We are fine. We moved on. There are no like cliffhangers to be left. <gasps> what happened with that? And for that, I am grateful. And if they do cancel it, you know I'm going to come with why shows get cancelled. You know that, right? So anyway, let's get into the fourth season of The Shy. I'm not going to lie. Getting into the fourth season, I thought I wasn't going to watch it because the third season was a drag. The third season was just long, overly long. It was just very boring. And because we're coming off of a scandal, it was like they, they needed to like scramble to put something together so people would forget about the scandal. But all it did was highlight how much that character that was involved in the scandal mattered to the story. So it made it very awkward, the third season. So heading into the fourth season, I was a bit skeptical about it i mean the fourth season isn't as good as the first two seasons but it was way better than the third season and for that thank god so heading into the fourth season keisha had been rescued after she was kidnapped you know kevin had a new girlfriend uh kevin's mother had gotten married to her girlfriend and then jake's brother was back you know all of those like very interesting things that happened in this fourth season one of the things i really didn't like as much was the way they introduce like story threads and not tie them up or like just introduce things just because they needed to you know save a story or they needed to like you know just bring something in and then move on because duda who became the mayor right i don't understand why they made him become the mayor but i mean sure he was like he's a gangster and so he's not the mayor but we never found out what happened to otis perry his pizza place like after the third after we see his feature so prominently in the third season it's never seen again in the fourth season so i'm like what happened to his pizza joints the pizza no has a stopped production but we never saw perry's pizza again so what happened to that one of our biggest gripes of the fourth season was his shooting in the first episode of the fourth season we see that oh he shot and like we saw this whole montage and saw everything leading to it and we thought it was going to be a huge deal but then it wasn't a huge deal so i don't know why they made it seem like it would be something that would be a game changer like the moment we see who shot otis perry we are going to be like oh my goodness but after we found out who shot him all we could think about was okay because first of all he was shot by brandon's mother and i know from a writing point of view, I know the only reason why they made him get shot by Brandon's mother was so that they could resolve the whole Brandon storyline and be like, yeah, yeah, we told you, we resolved it. It's okay. It's okay. Let's, let's, let's move on. So I do not like it as much. The whole Otis Perry as mayor, the whole he's trying to like defund the police, the whole he's trying to do all of those things. It really felt like agenda driven slightly. So whilst I, I, I actually understood what they were going for, because of who he was and because of like all the circumstances around him, it, it didn't land quite as much. So I was a bit like, mm, you guys are agenda driving right now, but like, I mean, hey, we'll watch it. My favorite part of the whole fourth season were actually Keisha's interactions with all the people around here. Keisha's interaction with Emmett, Keisha's interactions with Kevin, and then Keisha's interaction with her new boo. I thought, oh, that's pretty really sweet. She got like a new boyfriend who, you know, they, they did this whole storyline of like nerdy boys or like, you know, as Ghanaians who say, John boys are like the ones who love you better, not all these bad boy looking types. And I'm like, I mean, to each his own, you know? I, I like the fact that after a whole traumatic experience, she got a man that was very kind to her, and I that made me so happy. Her pregnancy and adoption and her rescinding her decision to not give her baby up for adoption, I thought, I mean, I thought maybe it was hastily handled, but at the same time, I thought it was also nicely done. So, I mean, for, for that plot point, I'm a bit like, you know 50 50 about it on one hand i really enjoyed it on the other hand i'm like really was this really necessary the one thing i was actually quite sad about the fourth season was that you know the first two seasons was a lot of focus on jake papa and then kevin these were like the three boys that were you know letting us see how the shy works and as we have steadily moved across seasons their storylines aren't as prominent like this whole fourth season i think papa's storyline was like two seconds and then he was out because you had to deal with every other character that was introduced because it became more and more an ensemble show. 
and a highlight for me was Emmett. Do you guys remember Emmett from season one and season two? Always hustling, always like having an angle with his baby mothers and his girlfriends and he trying to like, you know, score and how he had, you know, moved and changed, changed, I mean, sure. And how he had tried to mature and like do the right thing. I, I really enjoyed his storyline, even though I didn't get the whole concept of the open marriage things because children. <laughs> I keep on saying certain things they are calling and your friend they haven't called you to an open marriage don't do it you know because he decided that yeah sure I, you know i cheated on you so why not do an open marriage and then he was his heart was breaking but at the end of the fourth season when he and tiff are like yeah you know let's close up our marriage the only reason why to decide to close up the marriage was because the guy she wanted was like, nah, I don't want a relationship with you, dear. <laughs> Let's just be sex buddies and move on. And then she got hit. And as any true thing will have it, the moment an opportunity came at her, she jumped at it, legs open. So really, I think moving on, the fifth season, that's what we'll see. Whether or not Emmett will find out, whether or not she will move, he'll move away from the marriage. And yeah, I mean, that'll be interesting to see. And then we saw jada and her whole cancer thing i thought that was really interesting in a weird way so that's how jada's cancer felt like it felt like oh jada she's been in the story we haven't really given her anything to do so let's give her like a cancer storyline and they gave her the cancer storyline but then through that storyline we actually got to see more of darnell who i think is a very interesting character with his bluetooth earpiece all the time so that was really interesting. There are certain characters I didn't care about in the fourth season. Nina and Dre, I couldn't care about them. I mean, sure, I mean, whatever. Uh, Tracy and her whole organization and everything. She came across as being too much of a something. I didn't care for her. I thought they should have checked her storyline episodes ago. But I mean, we would have had to endure her till the end. But I also, I haven't mentioned Trick. But I like Trick and Imani's relationship. I like the whole dynamic that happened between Trick, Jake. And Imani about how like they actually became a family and how like you know they play the family dynamic so that was really nicely done Gemma I couldn't care for her she was trifling moving from one friend to the other even though she said that yeah Kevin wasn't paying attention to her but Kevin suffers from depression you know one thing that I was skeptical about heading into the finale was the you know attempted murder of Gemma's father because I thought for sure for sure the way Otis Perry was like I want to be involved in Jake's life He would definitely frame Trick for the attempted murder stroke assault and then take Jake By force, but then that didn't happen. So I don't know if that's like a great subversion of my um, uh, Hopes expectations But all in all the fourth season of the shy for me because it was a huge improvement on season three Instantly, I like it. But at the same time, it doesn't have the same quality storytelling that the first season had and the second season had. And I think that's mainly because of branding. Now, I know Jason Mitchell was a huge uh, POS on set. But in the storyline, he was like the thread pulling everything together. And that was, I think, intentionally done. But because of that, and I think they're trying to move to like a neutral point of view. They didn't have that one person that was like, holding everybody together so that made it very weird and i think that getting to the end they put emmett in that position but because we hadn't seen that progression it still felt a bit unnatural so i think that they are missing the brandon-esque character and if it's renewed for a fifth season i need to see certain things like otis perry what is going to happen to the mayoral position now i know i see his wife sitting in the seat we didn't vote for her okay we don't want to see her if we wanted to see her we would have voted for you but I want to see what happens, the, like the fallouts from him suddenly retiring and they're going to be like, ooh, what happened to that? Because you know some curious journalists will be like, was he the one that shot Jimmy's father? Kevin really got shortchanged this season, like they really made it like dump on him, dump on him, dump on him. And there's going to be a fifth season, I want to see him win, I want to see him flourish, I want to see him, you know, be in a healthy relationship, deal with his depression, you know, just be a teenage boy for once, just flourish. Jake, I hated him, but also the same I wish for him, for him to flourish. I know this this review has been like a mess, okay? I've just been like putting all my thoughts out there. But I really did enjoy the fourth season, you know? And right now, are you watching it just because, you know, it's done by black creators. It features a lot of black people. So like, yes, I have to watch it. Or are you like, oh my goodness, it was so good. No matter what you think about The Shy, let me know. And I will see you on my next video okay no this is a terrible outro 
Okay, so let me know what you thought about the Shy Season 4. Did you like it? Did you not like it? And I'll see you on my next video.